Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. In today's episode, I want to review two new products from Reactive Micro. So let's get started. Henry Corbis of Reactive Micro has two new products for us. These have both actually been reviewed already on Javier Rivera's channel, as well as Joe's Computer Museum, but I thought I would give them a try myself just to see how they work and also test them on my own systems. The first of these is actually a composite to HDMI converter, which Henry has found gives actually really good results. And he's gone ahead and included the power adapter as well as the composite and HDMI cables that you'll need as well as a stereo plug because this adapter also allows you to pass in stereo speaker signals and pass them through the HDMI cable to the monitor. The second item that Henry has now is a 12 inch LCD with both composite and HDMI input. And Henry went ahead and tested a whole bunch of different LCDs and he found that this one actually gave the best results in terms of both handling the Apple's quirky composite signal, as well as 40 column and 80 column text. So let's go ahead and we'll try them with my systems. The composite to HDMI converter comes with the converter itself, a five volt power supply for the converter, the cable for the power supply, a stereo jack to plug in from say a mocking board and run that into the converter, an HDMI cable, and then finally a composite cable. The nice thing is Henry has gone to the extra effort of sourcing cables that all have gold-plated connectors, so you're guaranteed to get the best possible signal that you can out of the Apple II. I got the composite to HDMI converter hooked up to my large screen TV. So here's the Apple IIe. I also have a phaser a uh, Mockingboard clone card in slot four, and I've run the audio from that card out using the cable that Henry provided into the HDMI adapter. And then I have the composite from the Apple IIe running into the adapter. I've got the power supply from the adapter just running into my system saver, so it comes on at the same time. And then finally, I have the HDMI cable running out from the adapter and into my television. So let's start with everything powered off and I'll turn on the power. So you can see that the TV picks up the signal and switches almost immediately. We can see that the text looks nice and crisp. If I just break into the monitor and let's just do some uh, printing here. Okay, so this is 40 column text. You can see it's nice and sharp. I don't see any flickering or any artifacts of the HDMI. So the signal looks really strong. Let's switch to 80 column now. I'll do a PR number three. Okay, again, it looks really sharp. If I look really closely, I can see a little bit of shimmering where it looks like the adapter is just struggling a tiny bit. Actually, that might not be the adapter. That might just be my television. Let's go ahead and boot up Total Replay, which is the game's archive. So you can see when it first started up, it came up in black and white, and then it very quickly synced to color. That wasn't maybe quite as fast as a CRT would do it, but still pretty impressive. You can see that the color is actually really sharp. Uh, I don't really see any artifacts of the HDMI on here, other than what's probably just coming from the television. Um, So let's see if we start up a game here. You can hear that the sound is a little warbly and I'm not sure whether that's actually my TV or the adapter itself. The sound is coming through the phaser mockingboard clone here and then into the HDMI. But other than the sound being a little warbly, it actually looks really good. This is definitely just about as good of color as you might get on a average CRT. Probably not as good as maybe a high-end CRT from back in the day, but nevertheless, 
for a fairly inexpensive adapter, this is actually really good. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up Nox Archaist, which is the brand new role-playing game from 6502 Workshop. Nox Archaist. This splash screen is actually in double high res and you can see it looks really good. The colors are sharp, uh, they're clear, there's not much bleeding or fringing. Let's look at the actual game itself. All right, so let's start a game here and I'll just continue one of my saved games. Okay, so here we are and I would say this looks fantastic. This is not double high res, this is regular graphics. I would say overall, uh, this HDMI adapter is performing really well. Plus with the advantage of having the sound input, it just makes it very convenient to be able to run your Mockingboard sound and the video straight into your television. The 12 inch LCD that Henry has chosen comes with a smorgasbord of supplies, pretty much any cable that you would need. As you can see, the monitor comes with a variety of inputs. As you can tell, it's not a very tall monitor. You can adjust the height a tiny bit just by using the same screw here, but realistically, that's about as tall as it's actually gonna get. Let's go ahead now and try out the LCD that Henry is selling. I've wired in the audio from the mocking board here using the same cable. And now I'm gonna also try the composite input to this LCD. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. So the monitor's coming on. It looks like it's picking up the signal. I wouldn't say it's quite as fast as the HDMI. All right, so there's the Apple IIe. See what things look like oh actually so i wired the sound then into the tv so that's coming from the television which is actually incredibly loud so i guess that's a good thing uh it looks like the remote control has a volume on it so we can try that in a minute but let's just try some simple programs here okay the text is incredibly crisp and sharp Let's try 80 column now. Okay, that looks good so far. Let's just run the same program. Okay, again, it looks really sharp. So for just a off the shelf LCD like this with composite input, it's doing an excellent job at handling the Apple II's strange video signal. Let me switch to uh, graphics mode here and see how long it takes to pick it up. All right, so it, picked it up literally instantly as soon as I switched to graphics mode. And you can see here, there's the usual color fringing on the text. It looks a little bit more pronounced here in this monitor compared to say a CRT from back in the day. Let's switch back to text. Okay, you can see there was just one flicker there, but it switched back pretty quickly. Okay, again, it looks like when you switch from text to graphics, it's pretty much instantaneous when you switch back from graphics to text. It looks like it takes a uh, just one flicker before it settles down. Let's go ahead and fire up Knox Arcade again so we can compare that to the television with the HDMI. So here's the game itself. I have to say that the monitor is really vibrant, um, but it does look like the colors are a little, I don't know if they're washed out or they're just not bleeding as much as you might have with a CRT. So you can see like in her shirt, how you can actually see individual little lines, which I think in a CRT you wouldn't actually see. I think it would do a better job of blending it. Same thing with the flag here where you can see 
what's supposed to be purple, but you can almost see the individual pixels there. Uh, so it's almost too crisp. Interesting. I mean, it looks really good, and certainly um, you could definitely play with it like this, but let's go ahead now and we'll switch to the HDMI input and see if that makes a difference for the way the color looks. Now we've got it going through the HDMI adapter here and then into the monitor. I've plugged in the audio cables from the mocking board so that the signal can get routed through the HDMI cables to the monitor. And I've also powered the adapter using the USB jack on the monitor itself. So that's kind of a nice convenience that you don't have to actually use a separate power adapter then for the converter. All right, so here's the game itself. You can see that I've switched the monitor to four to three aspect ratio to match what the Apple II is actually outputting. And I've also increased the sharpness. When I first fired it up with HDMI, it was a little bit blurry, uh, but increasing the sharpness helped a lot. And then you can see that the color is actually a lot better now with the HDMI. So you can see her shirt is just orange and then the flag has the blue and purple horizontal lines. So you no longer see any of that kind of vertical banding that you saw before. So that looks actually a lot better. Final thoughts on these two new products from Reactive Micro. I think they're both excellent. The composite to HDMI adapter is only $35 and that comes with all of the cables that you need. It's obviously not going to do as great of a job as say the VidHD converter from John Brooks, but for the price, you can't beat it. The LCD display, which I believe Henry is selling for $155, does a great job at handling all of the different text modes of the Apple II, as well as the graphics modes. The good thing is that both of these products come with all of the cables that you'll need, so you don't have to add any accessories to them. Full disclosure, Henry gave me these two items to review. I'm gonna go ahead and pay him for both of them because I think I'll actually end up using both of them for my Apple IIs. By the way, if you had missed the chance to buy one of those Night Owl security monitors for your Apple IIc, this new LCD from Henry is actually just as good, if not better. It's a little bit more expensive, but because it comes with all of the cables, it's probably about the same price in the end. I'd like to thank all of my Patreon subscribers for supporting me. If you'd like to become a subscriber, you can find a link for how to do that in the show notes. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button below. I'd really appreciate it. Once again, thanks for watching.